Welcome to SWK's video series on Sage 100. This video is going to provide a brief review of accounts receivable options. So often after you're up and running and working in Sage for years, you might forget to come back and look at some of the options that were perhaps not important to you at the time that you set up your system. Now's maybe a good time to take a peek see what this is all about. I'm only going to review a few, but hopefully they will be useful to you. The first is accounts receivable options. I'm sorry, divisions. You'll notice that I have this checked, and because I have this checked, let's pop over to customer maintenance. You'll see that there are two characters in front of all of my uh, customers. These are the division numbers. What we see when we have division numbers is the opportunity to post certain account numbers into their own individual accounts, let's say accounts receivable. Maybe we have two divisions and you'd like to break them up to two separate accounts receivable accounts. And you could see here are your choices. The other thing I think that is nice about the um, divisions is it's so simple to uh, run reports. Let's say you have an aging report and two separate people are responsible for collections. They can each have their own without having to worry about who, whose customer, who, what customer is going to be worked on by whom. Another thing that is interesting is the allowance of an expanded customer number. The default customer number is seven characters. If I would click on this, which by the way, I'm not going to do, it will prompt me and it will change my customer number length from seven characters to 20 characters. Just remember, if you select this, you won't be able to uh, go back to those seven characters. It is definitely a permanent change and you'll be alerted that that is what will happen. When we look at customer maintenance or customer inquiry and we see invoices, you actually have a choice on how invoices are displayed, either by invoice number, ascending or descending invoice date. You, of course, choose the one that would make the most sense for you. And also, do we want to display invoices with zero balances? Without this checked, let me pop up back over to uh, customer maintenance and let's take a look and see what that means. When I'm at invoices, you'll notice that all of my invoices have a balance. If I come over to my little search icon, if I would click on display zero balance invoices, you'll see that I now have a few invoices that have zeros. So what is the most convenient for you, to have them or not have them? Either way, you can, uh, when you are looking at an individual customer, you can come to this icon and make your change. Let's go back to options. I'm going to move over to tab two and point out two things that I like um, in this area. Uh, first, we have some aging um, options. First, do we want to age invoices by the invoice date or by the due date? Everybody likes something a little different, so you choose the one that works the best for you. What's nice about this is you can go back and forth to test how each works without causing a problem, and you could do this at any time. So if I'm using invoice date and I want to see what it would look like if I ran my aging report to do that by due date, give it a try. Also, our aging categories, we have the option of choosing months, and then it assigns one, two, three, four, or days. And days do not need to be 30, 60, 90, 120. You can make those days whatever you want them to be. Uh, next, I'm going to pop over to tab four. There's something here that I think is interesting is the ability to auto, auto increment customer numbers. What this means is if I, if I go into customer maintenance and I'm going to create a new number and I'm going to click on this little icon here and you'll notice it asks me for division because it doesn't know and I will uh, pick division two. It is going to auto assign that next number that was in that setup field. 
Now I would go through and set up this customer as I normally do. If that checkbox is not enabled, then you will not see this icon here. These are just a few little things that I think uh, might be helpful for you to review in your options. You'll notice that there's quite a few options uh, to take a look at. And if it's been a while since you've done so, you might want to take a little peek, see what's going on, see what you're missing. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. Hope it's been helpful. Thanks for watching.